guys, welcome to Slasher Pepper. I'm Roger Walker, and I'm joined again by David Bermatino. Hello. Uh, we did just did the uh, the drinking game, so I guess you could call this the after party, uh, <laughs> which I've said for you like three times in one minute now. <laughs> but um, yeah, David, you uh had some story. You had some stories to tell about almost the almost Killer Clowns too. Yeah, and that's that's really the punchline. The the let me take you back, back to uh, early, you know, late 1980s, when um, <clears throat> I'm in a theater. I'm not sure whether it's in New York or, um, or Cleveland, probably Cleveland actually, and I see a, a teaser trailer for a, a, um, that shows a, a, a globe spinning in space. And then this clown finger comes up and it spins on the finger like it's a basketball. And then it's like coming soon, killer clowns from outer space. And I was, I was like, this is the best movie ever. And I had only <laughs> seen the te teaser trailer. And then I never saw the movie. It, it didn't go to, it didn't come to theaters in Cleveland. It may have opened in New York and Los Angeles, but I never saw it. Um, and then I saw it on home video because it finally then came out in home video. And I got really excited about it because it was really cool. And it's it was exactly the kind of movie where I looked at it and go, oh, this is just a bunch of college kids, you know, drinking in their room thinking, well, what if we made this movie about like clowns and then but everything's like 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 cool and scary and and i thought that's exactly what this movie is and that's why i like it so then fast forward then to 1989 i graduated from film school and my very very first job in los angeles was working for a company called media home entertainment and that was the last independent home video company in the country before the studios started running their own home videos. The company was going out of business some months later and I was there and I had known that we had killer clowns as a, uh, in our library. But what I didn't know is as we were closing down the company and um, we were kind of clearing out all of the old closets and storage spaces and basements and the whole nine yards. I, I come down to the front lobby and there's a killer clown mask, like a rubber sculpted, it's this big killer clown mask sitting on the front desk. That's so and awesome. I freaked the heck out. I'm like, that's, that's my math. That's my, this is my movie. This is like, ah. And so I went to my boss. I was just like, I need, I need that mask. I want that mask. And <laughs> they said, no, well, actually we already promised it to so-and-so because she's going to give it to her son. I'm like, but I, but I, and I got, I okay. <laughs> what? I don't blame you. Oh, I was freaking out because I needed that mask. So what happened was I said, okay, fine. After nagging people for, you know, a good couple hours and nobody would, would change their mind, I went, fine. But can I at least, you know, it's one of those, but can I at least touch it? Oh, can I at least put it on? Can I at least, and I ended up wearing the thing. So I'm, I've been, so I put on the mask while I was working and I wore the mask for like a couple hours because it was going to be my only chance. And I'm running around work with this mask on. And then at some point, my boss, the woman, actually, the woman who, who was going to give it to her son, she didn't even know the movie. She just thought her son would like it because he liked <laughs> clowns. And she goes, you know, I, I kind of get the sense that you really want this mask. I'm like, of course I want this mask. This is my favorite. And I, you know, gave her the spiel again. And she's just like, okay, you can have it. I'm like, I can have the mask. And I like <laughs> hugged her and I ran around and I was just like, I got the mask, I got the mask. I'm running around with this clown mask on my head. So I had the mask. So that's how I got a hold of an actual mask from Killer Clowns, which is the the mask, the it's the, the orange haired clown. It's kind of got 
orange hair fins, like a mohawk and then a blip going on. So that's me. That's the clown from yeah. now. Of course, there are probably several versions, you know, several molds of the same mask for, for each clown, you know, in case something goes wrong. But that was an actual camera mask from the movie itself. So then what I used to do is I would watch the movie a lot and invite people to watch the movie. And, you know, you're probably too young for this, but there was a time when TVs had like giant tubes. And so your TV was like- Yeah, a big I know. Show, right? I'm not that young. <laughs> I still checking, know that. Just checking. So what I would do is I would invite people over to watch Killer Clowns so that we're seated facing the TV. Then I would take the mask and place it on the TV so it's looking out at the audience. So that I would I would say so that the movie was actually watching you while you were watching the movie, and that a real clown presence was in the room, and people were just well, like like yeah you know, like the quote when you gaze long into an abyss the abyss also looks into you. Do you yeah, know that quote? Yeah. This is yes yes this was the clown version of that. Yeah. Uh, when you gaze at the clown, the clown gazes back at you. <laughs> So, so that was my shtick for years, was to watch the movie with the clown on the TV so that it would watch you back. And it was, you know, I, it was my prized possession. And that said, I, I, I didn't take care of it. it you know, this, these kinds of things are, are made of, of, of rubber and very decomposable materials. And... And so it would get drier and drier. What I really should have done is put it under a little glass jar and, and kept it like a museum piece. But instead, I like to wear it. Um, and it was hot, too, because it's heavy rubber. Yeah. And so, so one time then, I'm in, it's Halloween. So I used the mask as a base for creating a clown costume wasn't a very good clown costume. It didn't quite look at all like a killer clown costume. It wasn't that good, but it was clearly I was a clown and I had this, this creepy face. So I'm at some party in Hollywood, who knows? I, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in Hollywood. And I'm doing my clown thing and these two guys come up to me and they're like, hey, who are you? I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm me and they're like no what are you supposed to be and they were very aggressive they were like what do you think you are what are you trying to be I'm like well i'm a i'm a killer clown from outer space of course and they're like that's our mask we made that mask i'm like what and it turned out to be the the kyoto brothers stephen and, and charles kyoto <laughs> and i'm like what they're like how did you get a hold of that mask and I'm like, well, and I had to explain the whole history, basically what I explained to you. Yeah. And, and they turned out to be, you know, pretty cool. And, and so we started chatting because the, we had, it turned out we had something else in common. Sea monkeys. Do you, are you familiar with sea monkeys? I'm not. Okay. So there are these novelties that have been around for decades. These, this, these little plastic tanks you can buy with, with little packets of dried eggs and they're actually brine shrimp. And then you bring them to life and they're these little shrimps you keep in these little tanks. I mean, they've been around for since even before I was a kid. So I was always a big fan of, of sea monkeys as well when I was a kid. And at one point, I wanted, when I was in film school, I think, I wanted to do a TV, like a Saturday morning TV series based on the sea monkeys, where it was sort of this adventure where they're, that was sort of like an eco adventure where their, their home was threatened by pollution or something. And they had to go on a journey to help save the sea monkeys home. Never got to make it. Well, it turned out around the same time after Killer Clowns, there was a Saturday morning TV show based on the sea monkeys. <laughs> strangely enough, but it was live action. It wasn't an animated show like I wanted to. It was completely different. But guess who made the live action Sea Monkeys TV show? The Kyoto Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> so that was part of how we bound it. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I wanted to do a, a Sea Monkeys TV show, but you guys already did it, so I can't do it anymore. 
so we chatted, we chatted, and I started talking to them, you know, I talked to them off and on for the next few months. And then they were, then they started to say, and this was all before, um, long before uh, Team America, where they sort of made a comeback. Um, they were like, okay, we want to make Killer Clowns too. You're obviously a, a, a writer and a huge fan. I think I had, had I, no, I, I, I hadn't quite written my first novel yet, I don't believe, but they knew that I was a fan and, and a writer. So we started talking about doing a sequel to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And then I had the idea of it being sort of a, a War of the Worlds kind of thing where, I mean, it was a big budget and that was part of the problem, but the whole idea was, you know, this was the first movie was just about sort of an expeditionary force yeah. that was going to just check out the area. It was a scout mission. And that actually then the second movie was essentially War of the Worlds, but with clowns. So it was really straightforward what the type of story was. It was going to be Independence Day with clowns. It was going to be that. And they really liked the idea. And we talked and we talked and we talked and boom, just stop talking. And I've never spoken to them again. It's it's something that happens all the time. And it's it's just things happen and people stop talking. But um, but I was talking to them about uh, I had pitched them and we had discussed a story for for Killer Clowns from Outer Space too. But that's not the end of the Killer Clowns story for me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, if you do, you want to hear more? Because there's more. So so after that, I, I've i I'm still to this day obsessed with Killer Clowns, but then you know, by then say even 10 years later is when I was started to get into video games. And so somewhere in the late nineties, after I was writing novels, um, I decided I wanted to make a killer clowns from outer space video game. Now I had nothing. I had, didn't have money. I didn't have, I was just had just done done some production, but what I am very good at, which is how my my book career got started, is I'm very good at calling people up and just talking to them and kind of convincing them, hey, this could be a fun thing to do. So I call up MGM, who who has the rights, who now owns the li are my for the not mine, but media's former library, which in which Killer Clowns is there, and very similar to my conversation with New Line, I. I get through somehow to the very person I need to talk to. And I say, hey, my name's so-and-so. You don't know me. I've done all this stuff. I want to make a game from killer for killer clowns. And then I explain a few other things. He goes, huh. I go, I want this. And I want that. He's like, huh. Well, come on in. And basically, the guy who was in charge of, of MGM Interactive at the time, um, a guy named Neil, who I'd never met before, mostly had me in because he thought I was crazy. Because he's like, who the hell is this? I, not crazy in a, oh, I better keep away from him, but who's this crazy person who also sort of sounds kind of legit, you know, like, but it's weird. Who would want that? And, and so he was the first person to say, okay, fine, you bring us, you bring us a package deal where you can get the game made and we'll let you make Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The side benefit is Neil is from that moment on, Neil and I became friends and we've been friends and neighbors in three cities at different times in our lives since then. And he's still a good friend to this day, although he's not at MGM, but we've just been we've been friends ever since it brought us to so clowns brought us together um and then and then i've gone back to mgm i actually came this close to doing the the game with thq um and they were really big in horror at the time they were doing the evil dead games and they were really into it because evil dead was doing really well and just as we were we were talking about how to make the uh, Killer Clowns video game, the last Evil Dead game that they published tanked. And then suddenly they didn't like horror anymore. 
because yeah. you know, and that happens all the time. Draw me up a wall. But then they're they're the the woman in charge of licensing there, Germaine. That's more or less how we really got to know each other. And she's also to this day a very, very good friend of mine. We still work together and and neither of nobody's well, nobody's at THQ in the US anymore. But you know, we've worked together at different companies off and on, and we work together off and on now today. So again, clowns have been very good to me in terms of yeah. <laughs> how it's it's gotten me to actually meet really super cool people that that re- remained friends even if if the clowns business has gone away but uh let's just say at this point um clowns have made me a lot of friends but i'm not done with clowns like like you know i'm glad we did this this uh this drinking game yeah and uh i still i still have uh, clowns in my sights that's it that's it it's that's not awesome, it's, actually uh, you know, and all I can say is, is, uh, you know, it's just another example of just like, you know, not worrying about what the odds are that you can do something. And it's just saying, oh, that's what I want to do. Oh, I think I'll figure out who I need to talk to to figure yeah. out whether I can actually do that or not. And then you do. And, and whether you get what you want now or not. There's always something in it, particularly if you approach it the right way. You make friends. You 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 learn how to do business better. Yeah. Um, and you know, and sometimes you get to run around at work with a clown mask on your head for hours. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. I've been. I even. I even did one of my my story for my game. Even to this day, MGM. Um, because the last time I tried to do it was as a VR game about two years ago. And I did a reboot story. Not only, oh, I didn't, didn't tell that. Not, oh, nice. <laughs> Not only did I do a reboot story where it was, well, I don't want to give away the story, but I did a reboot story. And so it would really would have been the new first Killer Clowns movie, you know, the way, you know, they remake things. But then I also have a trilogy planned. Um, that includes a lot of the second one would be a lot of the ideas from the sort of war of the worlds concept and then the third is journey to the planet of the clowns oh that's so awesome so you know we'll we'll see i I, probably somebody now is going to go run off and make them but um but yeah clowns are clowns are super cool to me and i this is one of my favorite movies ever yeah, it is. It is one of my favorite movies now too. Actually, I mean, I've seen it now twice, and I really love it. So, uh, uh, I was gonna watch it anyway if I didn't need to. But uh, thanks for introducing me to Killer sure. Clowns. Everybody needs a little clown in their life. That's what I yeah. say. <laughs> well, that that's the problem for me. Like, I am the clown to myself. You never see that. Too about me to myself and to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you seen the clown in me just a few minutes ago yeah. when. Uh... <laughs> oh, if you only had that footage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so that was the almost writer of uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space Two uh-huh. and uh, producer or whatever you want to call it from the game for Killer Clowns. Yeah, and uh, the proud owner of one of the masks from the movie. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's awesome. awesome. It's gonna be my bio: the almost producer of, but he got the mask. <laughs> <laughs> the almost producer of the game, the almost writer of Killer Clowns Two, the <laughs> the almost credit taker for Evil Gets an Upgrade. <laughs> no, 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 I fully, I fully take credit for that. It's whether that's, it was given true. or not is the real question. <laughs> But yeah, so there's there's the quick background on Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah, and a lot of fun uh, doing this uh, sort of double feature with the author part now. <laughs> and, cool. Uh, I hope yeah. your audience likes it. Yeah, me too. So I definitely like, like it. Like it. Like it. Go with it. it if you do. <laughs> and if you somehow first watch this video, the after party, before a real party, then make sure you check out here again, <laughs> somewhere, <That's right. laughs> the uh, actual drinking game. That was a lot of fun, too, actually. 
So yeah, I'm pretty uh, interested now. This uh, cuts up. Yeah, me too. Again, thanks for having me. It's 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 fun, and I, as you can tell, a writer, video game, film, TV, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, I'm a storyteller, so I like telling yeah. stories. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, really, I don't have anything else to say. Do you? Nope. I'm all I'm all set. Me too. Well, uh, then I guess I'll see you guys next time. See you. All right. See you too. Thanks. Oh! You're pissing. Off, Roger. It's gonna be wild tonight!